All right, welcome back. Welcome back to the Clarity Empress channel. Thank you for coming to the live. All right, so we're going to, you know, keep this thing going with the Saturday night shenanigans. I don't know why I called it that. It ain't really no shenanigans. We really don't be playing in here. But, you know, it's entertaining to uh, connect with each other. I know I'm going to change the title, but <laughs> it's entertaining to connect with each other, right? I do lies because I do like to talk to you all and get responses. That lets me know that, you know, you got my reading. The reading resonates with you. You know what I'm saying? So talk to me, y'all. When you get on, tell me what's up. What's going on with your life? What shall I ask spirit? What should I ask spirit? Hey. <laughs> hey, girl. <laughs> no, like, I'm not, we don't really play over here, but I might as well play. You know, let's, let's have some fun while we here. You feel me? <laughs> um, what was I going to say? Oh. So, yeah, what we ask in spirit now, I want y'all opinion. Type something that you want me to uh, ask when I when I put Put my cars up. I'm like, I'm looking to hear from you. Ooh, how will your next month be Tuesday? How will our next month be April? Oh, that's going to be interesting. Okay. <sighs> what else? What else? What else? Next month. Oh, that's cute. <laughs> I can hear your voice, too. Hey, girl. Hey. Ooh, lots of good ones coming in. Are we living in our purpose in this moment? Hmm. Do you feel that you are living in your purpose? Peace, Cherry. Damn it. Oh, there we go. Hmm. Let me get ready for that. You think you half up tonight? I'm down. I'm glad you look. You could be a piece of up for me. I don't care. I appreciate it. All right, so let's let's start with what is our month gonna be like? What do I want to use? Tell me, what is the month of April shaping up for the collective? Like, what's it gonna do? What it gonna do? What it gonna do? There. We, the Clarity Empress Collective family, would like to know, me and all my cousins would like to know, what is this month shaping up for us to be like the month of April 2024? Uh-oh. That flipped out. Look, look how it flipped out into my hand. 
Seven of Swords. All more, more lies are about to be exposed. We leading off with the Seven of Swords. Damn. All right. I heard you have to think about what you trust from what you don't trust. Also, this may be a game of che uh, chess, not checkers, meaning you need to strategize. You know, the Seven of Swords is not just a card about lying, but it's also a card about strategy, about being cunning and, and very strategic in the way you move, right? You can't let the left hand know what the right hand is doing. <laughs> I'm laughing because I did something like that tonight. Intentionally, but unintentionally, well, I'll put it this way. Intentionally, I just didn't know it would yield what it did, put it that way. So I took a trip. I had to do a couple, run my errands today. And part of my errands was to um, make a key for emergency purposes. Um, my uncle's sister asked me to make a key, you know, just to come over their house if I couldn't get in. You know, I would have to call the cops for like a, a wellness check or something like that. So she said, you know what, take the keys and make the copy. So I said, all right. Never got to make it, but I did make a surprise visit. And damn, I can't go into what happened. But I just can say that everyone was surprised. <laughs> that I arrived and I didn't have nothing to say and I basically just left and it just started a shit show but it uncovered seven of swords it uncovered a lie that someone told to me and others and then it robbed them of their ability to paint a different picture because a picture is, I ended up taking a picture too. A picture is a thousand words. It, it gave me the feeling of like when the feds uh, raided Diddy. Like, so let's just say I was the, a DEA. <laughs> but I wasn't. I didn't go collect nothing. I'm just, I just joke, guys. I just joke. But, you know, sometimes your presence can say a thousand things when somebody is being a, a liar. You know what I'm saying? Like when people are not telling the truth, they get they get caught, and they don't expect it. They don't know what to do. Um, they scramble around. They they try to make allies. They try to triangulate and manipulate other people to believe them and and favor what they're saying. But uh uh. It don't always work out that way. You end up digging your hole a little deeper, you know? So, mm, 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 mm. we dealing with some lies, y'all. I'm going to tell you right now. It's, it's more, to me, I feel like we're dealing more with exposure. People getting caught for what they're doing. We're dealing with exposure. Tell me more, spirit. This what we dealing with. This is what I did like tonight, y'all. I was a queen of swords, right? <laughs> I was a queen of swords tonight. I didn't even have to say nothing. I said nothing. And it said everything. I um I, I came, I was about to communicate something, and I did an observation, and spirit said, Don't say nothing. And I didn't. <sighs> so I don't know. I mean, I'm not trying to necessarily pick up on my own energy because I already know my situation, but if we talking about the month, then apparently we're going to be Queen of Swords and um, some foolishness that's in the Seven of Swords energy. We, family-wise, we, we are not here to play. I don't, there's nobody stupid on my channel, okay? Y'all are bright, gifted, talented, empathic individuals that can see nonsense a thousand miles away, right? And we here, we all here now to remember what it is that we need to know and i say remember right because before you come out in, of the womb no matter what direction you came out of the womb whether it was c-section or or natural birth 
there's a veil that comes out off, comes over you, put it this way, and makes you forget what it is you knew. But when you were in that womb and before you got in that womb, you knew exactly what you were coming here to experience. Tell me more. Oh, yep, working on ourselves. Um, I'm hearing um, people are taking up studies and particular things. It doesn't have to mean that you're at a university level or college level or whatever. It just also means that you you might take a class in herbs, right, because that interests you. Or you may take another creative class. Like I took a class in um, flower design, right, you know, weddings, uh, parties, all of that. I have an idea, not idea. I've had I've had I have several classes in my belt, put it that way. Some people might take a class in balloon art. Um, you know, you might take a class in project management. Most of that's online. You could take a class in uh what's everybody doing? Cybersecurity, because we don't have enough cybersecurity. Somebody is just taking something in to learn about themselves. They're applying their logic, they're applying their their smarts, their know-how. And this is order in order to build them up. So somebody's working on themselves. Tell me more spirit. Well, damn, we got three eights here. So this is the, the year of self. I will say this eight of wands, I'm sorry, eight of swords is crossing a little bit. And I feel like the eight of wands is crossing a little bit because... You know, it was coming, it was coming out sideways, but there's quick action here. And then the eight of swords is like coming out of your head. That's the challenge and the lesson to get out of your head in the way that keeps you stuck there. You know, um, sometimes you can ruminate so much on a thing that you just sit there and all you do is ruminate. If my life had this, instead of manifesting your kind of um wallowing or um festering instead of growing right you fester in a situation it just gets worse because you just think about it too much you don't do anything you stay in anxiety you stay in stress about it you stress 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 but when you manifest the way you think about it is you envision yourself already in it so we are we know if you know, this year is an eight year. Two plus 24, you know, two plus two plus four is an eight year. This is the year of self. This is the year of that growth. But this also is that year of exposure about oneself. Things you need to know about yourself or clean up about yourself. Festering is bad because when you stick in a festering type of environment, you're just staying around in a bad situation and letting it get worse. It's like you get sick and instead of taking a medication, you start the medication stop before it says, you know, you should stop. And then your situation gets worse. It festers because you didn't complete what you need to complete, you know. If you use a course of antibiotics and it's not hurting you, then it's and it's helping you finish it. Don't let it fester. You know, things turn into all kinds of stuff. You gotta stay the course. Literally. Tell me more spirit. You got three eight here. Eight 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 could be significant to you. Mm. I also get that the nine of cups in reverse, what you thought you wanted, you're not getting. This is more of a sorrow card. It's more of a disappointment. Uh, ooh, excuse me. Not getting what you thought you deserve kind of energy. Not getting your hopes and your wishes fulfilled. Being let down, really. That's the bottom of the deck. Night of Wands. <clears throat> Hastiness. 
somebody is strategizing or just some things that's going to happen this month um, that are going to be it going to happen in a flash. You know how the bridge went down um, in the month of March? I mean, several days ago now. It went down so quickly. There was no uh, resol no no recourse to it. it. You know, there's nothing you can do to salvage that situation. Nothing. It's going to go in and out. And, then, you know, so I will say Mercury retrograde starts on April 1st. So that's a good time to slow down any major decisions. You know, not a good time to sign leases, uh, contracts and things like that without this had already been a well thought out plan or well uh, executed search or something like that. Like, you know couple months ago you decided this is what you're going to do and you did your due diligence and now it's time uh april 1st through oh no it's usually three weeks right so whatever that is um it's not a good time it's it's a hard time for communication it's also not a good time to buy electronics um now i call myself doing some research a month before one year all right and it was around it was around this time of year and I bought this HP computer, an HP laptop from Staples. <sighs> I thought this, you know, computer was working fine. Eight months later, the hard drive went on that computer. I never had that happen. But I bought it in the middle of a retrograde. I did. I bought it in the middle of a retrograde. I had a warranty on it, but it didn't do me no good. The, the computer was dead. I had to get a whole new hard drive in that computer. Who's Lisa? Hi, Lisa. Nice to meet you. Welcome to the family. So, um, what we're looking for, what we could be looking forward to is protecting ourselves, working on ourselves, um, taking action, but not overdoing it. And also coming out our heads, you know what I'm saying? Um, working on that. Anything you're ruminating on, you find your brain going back to too many times, that kind of festering, you want to end that kind of rumination. You do not want to continue that. And so what we learned in previous readings is that you got to get into your body to get out of your mind. I, I didn't know that. Uh, I recently read, read that. So, you know, it's like something I've heard over time, but it didn't resonate a certain way until recently. And I'm like, oh, so if I do exercise, I can clear my mind because my body is moving. Okay, check. Um, you know, I know there's other things I can do. I always tell y'all about grounding, hugging trees and, all, and the like, but you just doing some movement, you know, distracts you from whatever you're sitting on in your brain, you know, whatever you're just cycling through over and over again, get you out your head, go out, meet people, do things, you know, that kind of energy. But the Queen of Swords indicates to me is that uh, collectively, this family, all my cousins, y'all are smart. We are smart people. And whatever life is throwing toward us, we're going to be able to sort through it because the Queen of Swords is known. She's known as the, um, the what you call it, the divorcee, maybe even a widow at times. She's been through life's challenges and she's able to navigate the storms. So for her, she her knowledge and wisdom is a match because she's coming through a certain lens okay and that experience was no joke for her so you know that's why she keeps that sword very close to her in case she ever needs it because it's a form of protection take out resonates all right so let's see let's get some oracles on that any questions any any comments let me see i do not want that oh we're gonna use the oracle of the seven 
energies this evening. Alright. Oracle of the Seven Energies tonight. Must have a camera, uh, 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 what you call it, break right now, commercial break. Ice Spirit, give me a message for the collective. Call of the Muse, Spirit, yeah, that's that creativity. That's that, um, when you call to the Muse, it's like you are attracted to your calling. You're attracted to your purpose. This goes back to what Michelle was saying. Are we living our purpose in the moment? Yeah, if the muse is calling you, it's your creativity that is calling you. You go If you go with the flow of life, yeah, you're being called to elevate your life. You're being called... Oh. Ooh, great big love and healing the heart. Oh, yeah. So, you know... In relationships that involve the heart space, meaning uh, traditional romances, or I say traditional only because I mean between two people, okay? Anything outside of that is not traditional except to your culture, okay? So traditional, yes, um, it, it could even be family, but there may be a mending, a healing that goes on. That's due to unconditional love. And it could be a catalyst from the call of the muse. And the reason why I say that is because when you start living in your purpose, energetically you raise your vibration. Energetically you become happier. Energetically you, you, you feel on a different frequency, at a different level, right? And then your heart opens up with great big love. And you start healing the parts of your heart that you need to work on, that healing. It's those core memories that pain you or triggers that people do. And then you got sacred reverence. Even more, somebody got the key to your heart or something. And then you got storytellers. So then at the end of the day, <laughs> you got a story to tell. You got chapters to write in your book about what you're experiencing. And then you get a grand symphony. You put it all together and it's beautiful music. Now, on a love tip, because this deck is not all love, you know, it's beautiful love, but it's not all about love. The fact that this is here is indicating there is some, some, I feel like it's, um, there may be romantic relationships that need work or need healing, but the the key really is to work on your heart. So if you're feeling like your ice is building up and freezing up your heart space, spirit is saying, okay, it's time to melt that. Not because you want to give in to people that don't deserve you, but you want to melt that just so that you can experience your life purpose and you can experience love. You know? So you want to be able to have an open heart. You want to be able to experience joy and contentment and purpose in your life, right? But in order to do even get there, you have to follow your heart, follow your calling, whatever that, that is. You, you, and, you know, you got to explore it. So, for example, all right, so my other life, I run a nonprofit. Now, the nonprofit is a STEM based organization. Well, I should say we have STEM based educational opportunities for children, out of school time opportunities, right? But the whole purpose was to create a nonprofit that allowed children to explore possibilities early in life. So we start at uh, finishing up kindergarten, starting in first grade, and they go all the way up to eighth grade. Now, 
these children are exposed to things like, you know, biology, chemistry, engineering, um, stop motion animation, astronomy. We're going to do that this year. Uh, business. Uh, I think we did we did restaurant business. We're going to do that again. Aviation, uh, architecture and design, uh, simple circuits. And I could just go on and on. That kind of stuff that we do, those little things that we do are giving those children opportunities to explore something that might pique their interest later. You know, we also have in our program a med school um, that's trademarked, and we teach them about the human body, and we teach them about, um, what do we do, the human body, oh, careers in the medical field, and then we do some mock surgeries at the end, right? So all of these things are to encourage them to see, okay, I had a little bit of that, and i like to learn more. How do I do that? It's to spark that curiosity within them. It's, help, it's to help them find something that makes them feel like they found their purpose, right? If they like it enough and pursue it enough, then, hey, this might be it. And I created it, you know, after my own childhood experience of working with some volunteer engineers that told us, do what you love to do every day and it'll never feel like work. And I was like, <coughs> excuse me, you know, as a kid, I don't know what that meant. I was told, go to school, go to college, get a job. So this this message is different. You know, this is not what my parents told me, go to school. No, they said, no, get a job doing what you love every day and it'll never feel like work. I'm like, well, what do I love every day? I didn't know. I had no idea, y'all, at that time. So now that I'm older, well, put it this way, that message never left me. So I did a lot of trials and a lot of searching. And some things felt better than others. But when it didn't fit, I kept searching. I started finding where my strengths are, but it didn't mean just because I was strong in it, it was actually my um, my purpose. Yeah. And we as adults should give ourselves that opportunity, like Monica mentioned, to broaden our horizon. We need to try some things to see, does this is what I want to do? Is this where I want to be? Is this Does this feel right? How it does this call my heart, you know? And I feel like that's why a lot of the workforce people just don't want to work because they're not called to do it. They might be good at it, but they not they're not called to do it. It's not something they see themselves at ten years, five years. <laughs> it's for some, two, and for others. You know what I mean? I managed at one organization. I was there for two two years. I think I was there two years. And I just couldn't get to work on time. It was just a block. No, I did get to work on time the second year. The first year, it was a lot to do with babysitting, you know, my babysitter and where it was. Once I changed babysitter into a whole different town, I was opposite traffic. So I was getting to work on time. After that, my boss, he was over it. I didn't know it. It didn't matter. I would, you know, we left, I, we severed ties. But I was managing $2.5 million of their money. And I would, say, I would say I did a good job on that, right? However, the way they looked at employees, I, I wouldn't have been there long. I just, they, it wasn't my calling. I wasn't, I just wasn't passionate to do that. Like, I, I wouldn't want to, if they gave me another chance to do it, I wouldn't want it. If he offered me more money, I still wouldn't want it. It's like I just sat in the office crunching these numbers and dealing with these uh, proposals. And it was, just, it was a no. It was a dub. I wasn't built for all of that. Just because I could do it didn't mean that's what I was supposed to be doing. So I had to learn. I had to learn. I, I learned. I look, got my real estate license. I've been an esthetician. You name it, I done tried a bunch of different things. Cook, <laughs> you know, admin, all kind of stuff, y'all. Uh, 
Um, I think that that mindset is 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 changing. Um, you know, in school now they have what I was doing. Well, what I've been doing with these kids since 2011 is now considered next gen science standards, right? So this was written into the public schools. Uh, curriculum as science standards, and they call it next gen science standard, next generational science standard. It includes arts. So when you look at STEM, you see STEM is changing the STEAM, and some people want to say stream, but it's just because they are realizing to a to really capture what science, you know, technology, engineering, and math require it does require reading and artistic value as well so you got to be creative you know what i mean that's why it's called to the muse here you have to be creative in order to pursue things like that because you can't just be a numbers person right with no creativity because what are you going to invent more numbers you know what i mean you got to be creative when they're creating all these ai images and sounds and and when they do all those 3D printing of things, it requires creativity. That's where the art comes in. Reading, they realize, okay, they try and stream, but it ain't, it's not really catching like that. But STEAM is, right? But the reading is essential. You got to have the same literacy rate as your math rate. Because how do you convey what it is that you've created with math if you can't do language arts so they they are the mindset in the world is changing up around um science the sciences um the value of the sciences has increased tremendously you know the things that i've been doing with kids since like i said 2011 um, parents will tell me that they just start doing it. Maybe like from then, I don't know. I remember in 2016, I had a group that I forgot what they did, but wherever they went, the parent told me the things that I was doing with them in 2014, they, four or five years later, they were just now seeing in their school. So back in the day, the creativity was only um afforded mostly to those in the gifted and talented classes they had more project-based learning they had more freedom of thought there was a different structure of teaching that was more um creative than linear you know what i mean it was more divergent they were able to think on uh, and use their own autonomy to come up with clues and answers and they would go through the engineering process and they would sit there and they, you know, break down something and then create a prototype of what they feel like is an improvement, test that prototype and then get a chance to improve the prototype. That doesn't exist in mainstream classrooms because the teachers can't manage that and give them the basics. You know what I mean? They just, they can't handle that. Those the teachers in the mainstream classroom are so laden with this is the curriculum, this is how they must pass the test, that they don't really, they're not really able to give these children that product. And then think about the size of the class. I don't know how I'm getting on this subject right now, but you get what I'm saying, <laughs> right? So we started off with the call to the muse, great big love. That's about, and then it's about opening your heart to unconditional love. Let's start with the unconditional love of self, right? And then healing the heart. So we all have traumas. No matter who you are, there's some sort of trauma you experience, right? And everybody has their own different varies of degrees of trauma and how we interpret that trauma. And then you got sacred reverence. So then the challenge here. This is in a challenge in the lesson position. Is that um, sacred reverence is about what has the key to your heart, or who, or who has the key to your heart, right? Um, 
And then you have the storyteller. So that's going back to the craft. How you want to tell the story of your life? How you want to navigate the circumstances we about to have next month and tell your story to yourself first? How you going to write it? You know what I mean? How are you going to remember your own history? How are you going to experience it? How are you going to express it? In a grand symphony. It's going to work out in the end. Um, you know, we've been hearing about the this uh, new earth thing. Y'all heard about that. I got my own theory on it. And I don't know if it coincides with what the, the main theory is. I don't know. I feel like this is what I surmise it to be. So don't shoot the messenger. This is just my interpretation. But I just feel like as we go through, the new earth is really a mindset. It's not necessarily a physical plane more than it is like a spiritual plane or a mental plane. But it's the way we see things what we're able to comprehend and or leave behind, right? Um, there are going to be people stuck in their patterns, stuck in their ways, stuck in them circumstances um, because they refuse to grow. Or they just don't think they have to, you know, some people don't, they don't, they don't even think they're refusing to grow because they don't think they have to, right? So they stay behind. In that, in that regard. And the higher vibrational beings, the people who, you know, see life as it is or, you know, as they understand it and they try to improve their life. Those people are on a different frequency or a higher vibration because they're elevating, learning about themselves, you know, focusing on growing, not trying to, you know, be in a rut or, um, um, in a pattern of toxicity with anyone, you know, those people are going to see life different and then distance themselves from those who are not doing the work, putting in the work in themselves, right? Trying to heal or working on their healing. So when we talk about the new earth, that's to me what it is. I don't know if that's what others think it is. I don't know if that was the original definition. I don't even know where it came from. I couldn't figure it out for a while. And I was like, mm, okay, I, I see it as this. So we're going to leave people behind. Those sneaky individuals that make hasty decisions. Those that strategize to manipulate. They're going to get left behind. You know, you can't take everybody where you're going. If you're going to be blessed, sometimes you got to lighten your load because those weighing you down, that's like having anchors when you're trying to go, you know, uh, put, you know, not raising your anchor when you're about to go sail into the sea. You can't, you got to lift them anchors up. You got to balance out the weight of that boat before you can move on. And in some cases, you're going to, have to take some off that boat. Those are those people that aren't growing. You don't need that energy. So you got to take, you got to make your boat lighter, more sustainable so you can get where you want to go. You see, it gives you a different perspective on, yeah, I, um, you know, I don't pretend to know the Bible uh, back and forth because I didn't really read it that way. I, I was in love with Revelation, so I won't lie. I loved that book when I was a kid. I read it, read it, read it. Um, do I do I remember everything? No. Key points stand out to me? Yes. But I never fed into this waiting for a person to come back for us. I just feel like there's a certain elevation that's going to happen. Um, it's not a specific Jesus coming back moment. I feel like it's more of us elevating our spirits, our minds, our consciousness. And those that don't want to, you know, well, they get the day they deserve. You know what I'm saying? Um, those of us that are preparing our lives and, and pre preparation, preparation means doing the work on ourselves. 
working on healing, working on being happier, more joyful, and again, more contentment. As we work on that, and our vibration shifts, and we repel naturally those that don't um, resonate with us. Um, you got to think about it like there's people in your life and you wonder why is I haven't seen them anymore. Well, y'all wasn't really resonating together. You know, you might have been high vibing and this person was like, I just want to smoke and drink. I don't really want to do anything else. And if you don't want to get high and you don't want to get drunk, then, you know, y'all not going to resonate on the same low vibrational level. You know? And those things are cute, I guess, every now and then. But for folks do that on a regular basis and expect other people to stay the same with them. And that's not how it works. Hmm. So take it how it resonates. Yeah, I think that's what it is. The Christ consciousness era. Yep. I, I agree, Monica. They refuse to do the work. You know... You can't make nobody do anything, okay? Don't try. Don't try. Don't even bother. You can't make anybody do anything they don't want to do. So don't. Don't. So don't. The only person you could control and grow is you. Your children, yes, um, to a certain extent. And then your obligation to them does end in adulthood. Now, what you consider the adulthood is subjective to you, right? But yeah, once you once they reach a certain age, I guess, or mindset, they free to do whatever to grow or not to grow. That is the question. <laughs> Yeah, get rid of the dead weight. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so that's the res- that's the reading, y'all. I can ramble all day if I want to, but I feel like that's what we needed to know. Take it how it resonates. If it don't resonate, it's cool. Don't take it. But in the meantime, please like, share, and subscribe. <laughs> it changes so you know I'm gonna make you know what time every time I think of you I think of water <laughs> so I'm gonna make sure I drink a little bit more water before I go to bed <laughs> I'm like who would ever think I would associate a person with water so much so it reminds me to do it even when I forget because I'm I I love to drink water and I love to make sure I get enough but then some days I really do forget then I think of Ty and I go I need to go get some water <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. you're the little water god all right y'all so thank you for coming i appreciate y'all want y'all have a wonderful safe saturday rest of your night um i'll see y'all tomorrow as usual uh you know i'll do my live um saturday night but i mean saturday sunday if i have other time i will do something earlier too okay But thank y'all. I appreciate y'all. Welcome to the family. If you're new, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thank y'all. Peace.